Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with my top tips for new players in Final Fantasy XIV and if you're here and you're a veteran stick around because a lot of these things I didn't know until well into my journey in Eorzea. So let's jump right in. So my first few tips involve you retiring to your nearest in room where I'm going to show you a few things that you might not know uh, you can do in here. So if you go over to the bed on the right, you can actually go over here and try on items from the online item store. So once you select the option, your character will very lazily jump into the bed for a nap and a window will open like this where you can see all the current available items on the store that your character can wear and you can try them on before you buy them and see exactly how they will fit on your character and it even comes up and, sho and shows you when um, something's not fit for your race in the game so some things you can only wear if you're a certain race i guess depending on like the character model and stuff they just haven't designed it for the different body types and characteristics that each race has in the game like there was a point where vieras the bunny race couldn't wear uh, hats at all um i think they can now but only certain ones but i just thought this was a really cool feature that you might not know about and even i didn't know about until i was randomly just like oh can i sleep in this bed and saw that there are a bunch of options to choose from i can even cosplay little yuna <laughs> i'm playing final fantasy 10 for the first time at the moment on twitch i'm having so much fun um but yeah so that's my first little tip that you might not know about my second tip which also applies to the in room is rested xp bonus so in final fantasy 14 rested experience points are a mechanic designed to encourage players to take breaks from playing the game when you log out or when you rest in a sanctuary such as an inn that we're in now or a player house and you accumulate rested xp um, it allows you to gain a bonus when defeating enemies and completing quests once you log back into the game or continue playing um, and this bonus obviously helps you level up faster and progress through the game a bit more efficiently xp wise so the amount of xp you can accumulate is limited and it is represented by a blue bar in the experience points gauge and you'll also see a little moon at the end of your xp bar that indicates that you're in um, a rested sanctuary and the um, XP bonus will be activated if you rest in that area. The rested XP bar does gradually deplete until you fully use it up and at that point you won't receive the bonus for the XP until you go and have a little rest again and it's just a cool feature that they added to the game to encourage people to take breaks because as you know MMOs are quite grindy and you can get addicted and spend hours sat down on your butt uh grinding grinding and playing and playing and it's just a good um incentive to get players to have a little break go afk stretch your legs grab some food before returning back to the game and get some extra xp for your character tip number three we have airship teleportation now if you didn't know the airship landing is travel uh within the major cities within eorzea so gridania limsa Uldar, all the all the goodies um and you can travel between those cities from the airship landings for a huge discount um so if you look here what the normal fast travel rates to get to limsa would cost me 400 gil but if i travel using the the airship landing i can travel for as little as 120 150 and save myself a lot of money now i only found out this tip like two weeks ago from my friend rosie in her stream she was streaming ff14 and she went to the airship land landing to teleport and i was like no wonder you're so rich in this game because i have wasted so much gill using my ether to travel everywhere and i'm at Limsa a lot so the amount of times I could have got to Gridania or Limsa using the airship landing and save myself hundreds and hundreds of gil is painful so use your airships people use your airships tip number four is do your blue quests for the love of god do your blue 
quests and I recommend doing them as you go along with your MSQ just to save you having to go back later and do them. They look like this. Here is an example of one I haven't done, the house that death built. And if I do a quick little search on Google, I can find out that it actually unlocks Palace of the Dead, which is a cool little thing that you can do on the side. It is essentially a unique dungeon designed for players to explore and progress in a different way compared to the game's traditional dungeons. It's structured in a series of randomly generated floors with each floor becoming progressively more challenging as you get deeper and deeper. You can play solo or go in with a group of four and it's designed to be replayable with the layout and the enemies changing each time you enter. You start at level one within the Palace of the Dead, um, regardless of your actual character's level outside of the dungeon. And as you progress through the floors, you get XP and strengthen your character. You can also find treasure chests, loot, uh, do various challenges and boss fights and traps. And it's just a fun thing um, to do with your friends when you get a bit sick of the MSQ. But anyway, back to the point at hand. Your blue quests, they look like this. You should really do them. Um, here's a handy link that I'm gonna put in the description. It basically links and shows you everything that is unlockable at each level that you get to in the game and what blue quest or main story quest you need to do to unlock it so whether it's dying something or getting your first mount or in this instance unlocking palace of the dead whatever it is the sometimes the game doesn't directly tell you what to do to unlock things and you'll see people with something and you'll think oh how do they get that um, this link is super handy um, to go through and unlock things as you're doing your msq I am so... Oh dear. Okay, my last tip. Tell people when you haven't done a dungeon before. Whether it's a dungeon or a trial or an alliance raid, no matter what it is, type in the chat when it's your first time running it. Even if you're not a sprout, there are gonna be things that you haven't done before and it can be really useful, especially if you're playing tank or healer and your role is really important um, to let people know to not expect your best and expect you to get lost or to, you know, not know when certain AOEs are going to take off, especially if you're running in blind, which I tend to do, which, you know, probably isn't the best. I should probably like look up each dungeon before I run in, but sometimes you're just playing and you're just enjoying um sometimes it can be useful to let everyone know before getting everyone killed <laughs> as we saw in this clip that is the end of the video i really hope you guys found it useful if you have any questions about the game in general if you're a new player and you need some tips leave them in the comments below don't be this guy i'm always open to helping and answering any of your questions if you have any or if my video doesn't address your specific issue don't be a dick, just ask. <laughs> As always, join our Discord if you haven't already. I know a few of you already have and I've been enjoying getting to know you guys. We have an FF14 uh, text channel in there and you can join and send screenshots of your characters and ask any questions and just have fun with us. I also stream twice a week on Twitch, so you should also come and hang out with us there. As I said before, I'm playing through FF10 for the first time at the moment and I also regularly play 14 and I play on Light Lich EU server and also Ether Fairy NA server. So I'd love to run some dungeons with you guys and have some fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!